This video will guide you on the steps to perform a tube thoracostomy or chest tube. This procedure is performed to drain liquid or air that has accumulated in the thoracic cavity and is impairing lung expansion. Begin by identifying the side or site of injury, then identify the fourth or fifth intercostal space at the anterior to mid axillary line. This site should be at approximately the level of the nipple and insertion is recommended lateral to any breast tissue. Abduct the patient's arm on that side to facilitate placement by opening the rib spaces and to assist with landmark identification. Before beginning the procedure, open your chest tube kit and ensure you have the correct supplies. A skin cleansing agent, lidocaine, sterile gloves, a curved hemostat, a tube clamp, a number 10 blade scalpel, scissors, a needle driver, 2O silk suture, Vaseline gauze, standard 4x4 gauze, and tape to secure the chest tube as well as a chest tube drainage kit. Also ensure that you have selected the correct size tube for use in your patient. A small 20 French chest tube may be used for drainage of an effusion or pneumothorax while a larger chest tube, such as a 36 wrench, is recommended for drainage of a hemothorax to prevent blood from clotting in the tube. Be sure to tear off several large pieces of tape for securing the chest tube to the skin and have them available before beginning the procedure. Also, make sure that your chest tube drain is set up and connected to suction before you begin. Don your sterile gloves and begin by cleansing the skin with chlorhexidine or betadine and place a sterile drape. Inject a generous amount of lidocaine, with epinephrine preferred, for local anesthesia if your patient is awake. After the lidocaine has been able to take effect, Make a 3 centimeter incision through the skin and into the subcutaneous tissue at the previously selected site. Use blunt dissection to identify the rib and rib space with your finger and the curved hemostat. Position the hemostat above the rib to prevent damage to the neurovascular bundle that runs below it. With a firm grip and pressure, puncture the intercostal muscles using the curved hemostat, being sure to use your finger as a stop to prevent uncontrolled deep insertion. Once inside the chest cavity, spread the hemostats to tear the muscle and make a passage large enough for the tube to pass. Insert your finger and ensure that you can identify the passageway and make sure that you are in the thoracic cavity. Try to palpate the lung during respiration. Now, measure the chest tube to the level of the clavicle to note the expected insertion depth. The numbers on the side of the tube indicate the distance to the last fenestration on the tube. Clamp the pointed end of the chest tube to control any leakage of blood or other fluid upon tube insertion and use the curved hemostat to assist with directing the tube into the newly created defect in the chest wall. Sweep your finger around the tube superiorly 
and inferiorly after placement to ensure that the tube is entering the thoracic cavity and not being directed in a false passage in the subcutaneous space. Once the tube has been inserted and directed posteriorly and superiorly, it may be connected to the chest tube drainage container, being sure that the tube is not pulled loose prior to being fully secured. A 2-0 silk suture may be passed in a purse string or horizontal mattress stitch around the tube to close the wound margins around the tube. Pull the two ends of the suture to equal length and remove the needle from the field. Tie the suture in place tight to the skin. Now wrap the ends in opposite directions around the tube to form a series of X's. This is often described as a Roman sandal or Chinese finger trap configuration. Be sure to push the suture down to the skin edge before tying the suture again to prevent slack from being incorporated into the suture. Now wrap the tube with Vaseline impregnated gauze and push it up against the wound margin to prevent any air leak. The tube site can next be covered with a 4x4 gauze. One method is to cut a slit into the center of the gauze and place two pieces one with the slit 90 degrees relative to the other to prevent the gauze from sliding off the tube. The gauze can now be secured to the skin using the tape sections that were torn off and made available at the beginning of the setup. As a courtesy to the patient, cover the nipple with a small section of gauze prior to placing the tape to minimize discomfort during removal later. Please ensure that a chest x-ray is taken to ensure adequate placement of the tube after completion of the tube insertion. A tube can always be withdrawn if kinked or bent, but should never be inserted further to prevent contamination or infection. A final piece of tape wrapped back on itself at the distal end of the tube can then be applied to the patient's skin. This is called a mesentery tape and can be useful to decrease the strain on the tube during patient transfer. Okay, so the atriums are, are sealed, they're sterile. Just get it out of the bag. Okay, 
here, we open it up. And once it's open, this is what we have. We have a little tube of saline right here that is pre-filled to the amount that the atrium needs. And we're gonna dump it into here, which is gonna go all the way down to this arrow. So we take this paper off. Open up our saline and then just squeeze it into there. bottom it has a little stand I'm just gonna twist it open that way it doesn't get knocked over so we have our suction tubing just regular suction tubing we open it up attach one of the ends into the suction right here where it says suction Make sure you have a nice tight seal. This other end is gonna go into the suction canister at about 60 millimeters of mercury. Continuous suction. Turn it on and set it at about 60. Once you have it on, it's going to start bubbling over here. Yeah. This is just, we're waiting on the position to insert the chest tube. This is what we're gonna hand over to the physician once the physician is ready. The physician will take this off and then attach it to the chest tube.